Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. Welcome to those that are viewing or listening to us later on today. Um, just a couple announcements before we get started. Uh, tomorrow evening is Ladies Night Out with their Christmas celebration. And then a note from Linda Hoke, the cookie sale is going on this Sunday still. Orders can be placed in the basket in the gathering space. You can pick up your orders next Sunday, and those who ordered cookies for pickup today will find them in the gathering space. Also, a big thank you to all who have ordered or will order cookies from the Emmanuel Youth. There's other announcements and more details about announcements in the bulletin, along with the schedule for the week. And we will begin now with the lighting of the Advent candle. Today we relight the candle of hope and the second Sunday candle, the candle of peace. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace from the prophet Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. From the Gospel of John, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. John 14, 27. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves and in our families be peacefully resolved. May there be peace in our cities and in the countries of our world. Help us to see the paths of peace in our lives, and then give us courage to follow them. Lord, let us remember that you only are the giver of lasting peace and that you are always with us. Amen. Would you please rise for the confession and the forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our life, our mercy, our might. Amen. As we await the day of the Lord, let us confess our sin.
great and holy one, in this time of waning daylight, we confess the shadows of sin in our lives. We build ourselves up at the expense of others. We rely on our own efforts to make our lives secure. Yet you, O Lord, are the potter, and we are the clay. Come to restore us in your image, remake us into your people, and rebuild what sin has broken, that we and the whole creation may rejoice. Amen. Fear not, people of God. The Almighty has done great things for us. God casts away our sin from us and makes us a new creation. In Jesus Christ, God comes to set you free. Take heart in the tender compassion of our God. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, Prepare the Royal Highway. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the refining fire of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, be with you all.
Let us pray. Stir up our hearts to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Do I have any more little children out in the congregation that want to come up for the children's message? Any more little kids? Do I have any big kids that want to come up? Okay. All right, my littles. I'm going to show you something, and I want you to tell me all the things that you see. What do you see? Somebody tell me what they see. Kenzie? A candy cane. What else do you see? Peyton? Green. green? Well, you're, oh, okay, down here in the plastic there's green. What else do you see? Hillary? White. White, very good. Anything else? Riley? Red. Anything else? Can you see anything else in this? Hillary? Wrapper. There's a wrapper on it, sure. What if I turn it this way? What do you see? It's a walking stick. A walking stick? Yeah, could be. What else? Could it be a letter? What letter? J. Very good. And have we ever seen this before? What could this be? It, it's a candy cane. What about what if you do? You have them at home. Could it also be a shepherd's crook? No. It couldn't? Well, I think it might be. I don't know how Pastor Mark and Kevin do this every week. Okay. I'm going to tell you the story about the candy cane. The story tells of a candy maker who lived in Indiana who wanted to make a candy that would help us remember who Christmas is really about. No, not Santa Claus. So he made a Christmas candy cane, and he incorporated several symbols for the birth, the death, and the ministry of Christ. He began with a stick of pure white hard candy and Hillary said she saw white to stand for the virgin birth and the sinless nature of Jesus the hard candy stood for the solid rock the foundation of the church and the firmness of the promises of God the candy maker made the candy in the form of a J to represent the name of Jesus, very good. Turn it over, and it also stood for the staff of the good shepherd, which is what Jesus is to the people taking care of his flock. The candy maker then included red stripes. He used three small stripes and one large red stripe to represent the suffering Christ endured at the end of his life. 
The candy cane is still a way that you can share with everyone the story about our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's a poem I want you to listen to to help you remember. Look at the candy cane. What do you see? Stripes that are red like the blood shed for me. White is for my Savior, who's sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that's for sure. Turn it around, and a staff you will see. Jesus, my shepherd, was born for me. Let's bow our heads and say a repeat prayer, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to live and die for me. Help me to remember every time I see a candy cane. Uh, amen. Now, Kevin is going to help me pass out candy canes for you to take home with you, and I want everybody to take two. One for you, and one to give to a friend to tell them about the story of Jesus, okay? All right, after you get your candy cane, please meet your teacher for children's services, The first reading is from the 11th chapter of Isaiah, reading verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples, the nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thank you. The responsive reading is from Psalm 72. Please follow from your bulletin. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. That the mountains may bring, may bring prosperity to the people, and the hills in righteousness. May he live as long as the sun and the moon endure for one generation to another. In his time may the righteous flourish and let there be an abundance of peace until the moon shall be no more. And blessed be your glorious name forever, and may all the earth be filled with your glory. Amen. 
The second reading is from the 15th chapter of Romans, reading verses 4 through 13. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Jesus has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall have hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we uh, certainly all know the typical symbols of Christmas, and there are many. Our stars, poinsettias, Christmas trees, Santa Claus, candy canes, reindeer, just to mention a few. But the season of Advent seems sparse by comparison. I mean, what are the symbols of Advent? Well, we have an Advent wreath and Advent calendars. That seems to complete the list. But if we glance at today's gospel passage, we might discover another symbol, a roadway, the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, shouts John the Baptist, and another place in the scripture, prepare a highway for our God. John the Baptizer is one of the most vivid characters in all the drama of redemption. There's no doubt about that. You can almost hear the rasp of John's voice as he proclaims or feel the scrape of camel hide on his back. There he is. Can you not see him? Barefoot atop a rock, waving a willow branch in his hand. He's coming, John yells. Clear the boulders, 
Level the ground, dig the roadbed, make it run true. Today, a veritable highway cuts through the center of John's sermon. How do you see that roadway? How might most Ohioans see it? Is it level? Is it smooth? Is it straight as Interstate 75 slicing across the center of Ohio? Or is it a dirt road, rugged and sturdy, parting the trees and disappearing into the gloom? Now, most of us aren't inclined to think too much about roadways. Our minds focused on destinations, not the roads that take us there. Yet every single solitary road carries a history. And here in Ohio, we know the importance of the roads that carry history. Highways, railroads, dirt roads, side streets, doesn't matter. Every road holds a history. Trampled by animal hooves and moccasins, car tires and wagon wheels, work boots, tennis shoes, barefoot children, white-bellied snakes and deer springing along, 18-wheelers, RVs, and state troopers. Roads carry history as well as people, and today's gospel road carries God. So grab your shovels, crank up the bulldozer, make straight the highway for our God. When John the Baptist bellowed these words, he looked out and saw the roadway cluttered with rocks and stumps, rutted and rough. And like a fire ranger in a time of drought, John the Baptist scanned the skies for signs of smoke and then grabbed his ax to clear the brush. For soon, God would arrive. And God helped the man who has allowed his road to get choked by debris. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Grab your shovel, clear the debris that distracts you from giving even a second thought to God. For the kingdom has come near. There's a novel out. It's called The Clearing by, Tom, by Tim Gautreau. It tells the story of a man who leaves the comfort of New England and travels to the swamps of Louisiana in search of his long-lost older brother. He soon, soon learned that his brother, the older one, of course, suffers from mental illness, and he has cut himself off from the family. The story, ah, oh, it winds its way through a land of violence and greed played out in a deep forest. It's a desperate story you see of a rescue mission where timing matters and where there's no time to waste. This is what the road of God's advent is about, the road of God's coming. It's that kind of road, an urgent kind of travel. This road, this path of God is built to transport nothing less than salvation. And it takes it to prisons and run-down neighborhoods and rural communities that are just struggling to survive. The road is crowded with decrepit motels, truck stops and police dogs sniffing out drugs. And along the way, amber alerts flash their message. Someone is lost. Someone precious is lost. Help us. Someone, please come help us. Come, Lord Jesus. This is John's gospel road, his de desperate scheme of Advent preparation. Through small towns and big cities, on country lanes and four-lane roads, our Savior travels. He comes to rescue the lost. He comes to rescue us. So clear the road. Let us rid ourselves of anything that obstructs God's way. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. John's proclamation is filled with images, images of cleansing, of straightening paths, of cutting down useless trees, of burning away chaff. This is John's baptism for the repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. It means cleansing, as well as a changing of the mind, a turning toward Jesus so that one's whole self is pointed toward the Lord of this world and of eternity. The perfectly decorated Christmas tree will not save us. The perfect dinner party will not save us. Just the right gift for one another will not save us. It is only Jesus 
who can save us. So ask yourself, what are the rough places that need to be leveled in my life? What is the chaff in my life that needs to be burned off? Now there's a confrontation in the gospel and it gives us an example of the chaff that might, might plague us. We cannot ignore the blunt words of Jesus as he directs them towards the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And why? Why was John so blunt and brutal with them but not with the masses who flocked to the waters? Well, I think it's because the Sadducees and the Pharisees were the self-righteous and the masses were the victims of the self-righteousness. And it's really no different today. Is it perhaps a sense of self-righteousness, that chaff that needs to be burned away from my life? If so, burn it, for it obstructs your view of God and permits you to worship yourself rather than God, for it is only Jesus who can save us. To do this, I exhort you, call upon the Holy Spirit and call upon that Spirit daily. Let that be your Advent prayer. Clear away the debris, and once you do, you can begin to clear away the debris in the world around you. Become a child of God day after day and allow the Holy Spirit to work through you to bring peace to all the world. Prepare the way of the Lord Make his paths straight. Make straight the highway for our God. For salvation is coming. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of the day on Jordan's bank the Baptist cry, hymn number 249. This time I invite the baptismal family to please come forward and the rest of the congregation may be seated. I welcome all of you to follow along in the order of service on page 227 in the four part of your pew hymnals. I'll mess that up. 
God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to a new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. I present Madeline Rayleigh Rollins for baptism. Excellent. As you bring this child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, nurture her in faith and prayer, so she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help her grow in the Christian faith and life? I do. People of God, do you promise to support Madeline and pray for her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Would you please rise? I then ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. I need a little more energy from you, Dustin. Sorry. <laughs> I only joke with them because I can. <laughs> Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Much better. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father only, creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the whole Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and thanks. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with the water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away the sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your daughters and sons. No longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized into Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Warm. Madeline Rayleigh Rollins, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the God, the source of life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Madeline with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. 
Amen. Madeline Ray Lee, you are marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine before others so they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let us welcome Madeline. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Thanks be to God. You have to get busy. I'm going to take the baby on a walk.
In hope and anticipation, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Renew us in the covenant of your Son, O Holy One, and revive us by the outpouring of your Spirit, who leads us to wisdom, understanding, and faithfulness in you. Today we pray especially for Trinity Lutheran Church in Malenta and their pastor, Adrian Meyer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Establish harmony in all creation, that all living things may work according to your loving and generous purpose. Fill the earth with your goodness and glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your spirit to those who hold power and authority among the nations. Lead them to tend to those who are poor and meek with your righteousness and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By your word and your people, encourage and give heart to those who have lost hope in the face of depression, disease, and death. We pray especially for those whose names are listed in the bulletin, along with Wayne Barlow, Gary Sowers, Lance Rice, Mary Danner, Michael Heth, Dean Miller, Shelia Field, Chuck Smith, Helenia Stanley. We pray for the family and friends of Barb Smith, we offer prayers of thanksgiving and blessing upon the baptism of Madeline Ray Lee. We thank you for the birth of Nicholas, the grandson of Erica Melligan. We pray for those in care facilities, those bound at home, and all caregivers. We ask for your blessings upon the military and we offer our prayers for all others whose names we place before you this morning. We ask that you give faith in your promises to all those that are in need of healing. Hear us, O oh God. Shape this faith community into a place of welcome and support for all people. Feed and strengthen us by your gifts of grace that we may share them with others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have gathered the saints into your holy and eternal presence. Make us steadfast in the faith until we are all made one in your new creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, confident that you fulfill your promises through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us extend a sign of peace to one another. Peace. He's with you. of days, 
This one who existed from all eternity, whose very breath called into existence the worlds, becomes flesh conceived in the womb of a virgin. The word creates another Genesis, bringing morning light into darkness again. This then is the creation of something completely new. God is a baby, God is ransom.
Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of hope through Christ, our peace, in the power of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our sending hymn, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers, hymn number 244. Go in peace, bring good news to the poor. Thanks be to God. We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life, and we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays at 8 for the contemporary worship and at 10.30 for the traditional worship service. Thursday evenings at 7 we have our praise service. 
and on the fourth Sunday of each month at 1.30 we have our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emmanuel Lutheran Television, 241 South Prospect Street in Marion, Ohio. No gift is too small and will help us with our mission of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.